Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. Yeah, how you doing? Yeah, it's a Friday. Oh. And I don't know how to be fun. We know. We're drinking contraband. Ah. <laughs> Can I get some paraphernalia with my contraband? Sure. Let me go get the colored glass paraphernalia. Um, so, is this there was... such thing as a whiskey bong? Can you bonk? <gasps> <laughs> we both thought about it and realized you can that's be. That's probably possible. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. on the next whiskey biscuit, <laughs> we will be filming in Colorado. <laughs> All right. So uh, wait, hold. Speaking of, yeah, it's for Friday. Uh, new whiskey biscuits tomorrow. We missed last week. Sorry. We were so tired. Well, we did the big finale, and it was supposed to be a two-parter with the final second half. Well, and Rex edited for 27 straight hours with no sleep. Eh. Act better. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's probably true. All right, so Mark Patton, our level one whiskey sommelier, currently living in Korea, okay. gave us, brought this whiskey with him when he came to class. Now, is it Kirk or Kurt? Kurt? Or Kurt. Wait. Kirk. Kirk. Mark. Mark? I just said Mark Patton, and you said, so is it Kirk or Kurt? <laughs> <laughs> Mark Patton, you magnificent bastard. <laughs> Okay, so here's the thing. Someone, uh, one of our other sommeliers, uh, Sam, said that um, he told a friend about this cheetah whiskey, and that friend, who was a brand ambassador, said, oh, yeah, yeah, that's illegal to sell in the U.S. And I don't know why. I looked it up, and I'm trying, I'm guessing it has to do with how they're producing it, or how they're aging it, or maybe they're only aging it in used barrels. I don't know. Or, what you I don't know. My guess is it's not illegal as a product, but illegal for how they're labeling it. That would be my guess. International sales, maybe there's like weird tariff regulations, how many things can you, I don't know. I don't know, who knows. But this is a single grain whiskey yep. from uh, the Cheetah Distillery owned by Suntory. Yep. Uh, this is one of the whiskeys that goes into the Hibiki blends. Man, I'm really excited based on the smell. <sighs> Now this is aged in a combination of wine, sherry, and bourbon cask, and then blended together. So I'm getting sweetened butter. I often get this this butter note on Japanese whiskeys that I really like. Sweetened butter. Oh wow, this is really rich in the nose. Yeah, it really is. Oh, let's go through your progression. Then. You know what I'm getting? I'm getting super movie butter popcorn. Salt notes. I'm saying. And the over buttering. Yeah, okay, so on the color, extremely light. Very light. They're not adding coloring, I don't think, in Japan, so we can go off of that. Mm -hmm. um, in the nose, I'm getting buttered popcorn. Intense butter. And maybe melon. Uh, like, what, not melon, like, a, there's the, what, there's the orange one, which is, and then there's the that honey, light green one. Honeydew and candy. Honeydew, honeydew, that's a, like, maybe honeydew. Okay. Right, but it's not dominant. I think buttered popcorn is more dominant. Mm. Now we're gonna go into the palate. Oh man, I got oh. sweet. It got sweet. You know what that is? It's angel food cake. And that butter note does mm -hmm. not disappoint. That's that's angel food cake. And not overly sugared. Yeah. Kind of vanilla cake. This is kind of desserty, but I really like it. Yeah, me too. Damn, Mark, thank you. I didn't think I was going to like this one, and I had no reason to not like it. I just, I, I, actually, I can't figure out why I didn't want to try it, but I didn't, but I, I was making a mistake. Dude. Um, the aftertaste vanishes. There is no aftertaste. It doesn't linger. There's no oil. Now, here's one thing that's really cool about Japanese whiskey. They do, uh, so you know how you get blends in Scotland? Yeah. Where you end up with, um, uh, in a blended scotch, which means you're, you're blending malted barley, uh, malt whiskey, and grain whiskey, uh, then you end up with a blended scotch, and you're taking it from different distilleries, different kinds of production, pot still grains, uh, pot still columns still all mixed together, right? Mm -hmm. Well, in Japan, they do that too, only they don't work with each other. They work within their own distillery. And so all these distilleries in Japan have dozens of ways of producing whiskey. Mm -hmm. They produce all of these ways, and then they blend their own products back together to create their whiskeys. Okay. 
And I think that's so cool. You know, only the country in the world who does it like that is Canada. Okay. Creating different variations and then blending them back together, but no one does it as diverse and at the level that Japan does that. The finish is gone. It, uh, it other than in the final swallow, where it, there's a little bit of a zest note. It lifts off fairly quickly. And now I'm getting a little bit of the kettle corn in the taste. That's what it is, kettle corn. Buttered kettle corn. Yeah. Slightly sweet, slightly salty, slightly buttered. So here's my thought about NAS, and we've talked about this before, I'm gonna say it again. What NAS means? No age statement. Yeah. Now, I do think there are plenty of distilleries that are using no age statement whiskeys as a way to release product and get it out there and make money, but they haven't really thought it through and they haven't spent the time to really develop the whiskey. There are other distilleries and other master blenders and distillers who are using no age statement whiskeys as a way to, to remove the handcuffs and make something they really think is worth tasting without needing to be limited by a year range. I think Lafroy does an amazing job of NAS. I think Ardbeg uh, mostly, oh my God, mostly does an amazing job. Is that the last of it? Dude, it is the last of it. It is. No, 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 it was the last sip. Don't worry, don't worry, there's none in here. Anyway, um, so I, I understand why people would be annoyed by NAS, but I think it goes both ways. I, this, I got it. This is the thing you need to compare to this. The whiskey. thing that you just drank all of? No, there's another. I had a backup 12 year old red breast? Yeah. Oh, sweet. Who knew? <laughs> I know. Yeah. Rex is paying attention to the mooching. All right. Oh, let me get no, it no, off. no, like seriously. If uh, you can't get your hands on this, and not that Redbreast 12 is new super cheap, but it has the same kind of buttered smoothness notes. It's about 80% of the way there. And it's really close. Yeah. It's a Japanese Redbreast red 12. This is Redbreast if you added a dash of sugar. Yeah. That's it. And it's, if you took a Redbreast, added a tiny little third of a cube of sugar, then you would have cheetah. No, I think I'm, it's more than 80%. It's like 85, 90% of the way there. This is the Japanese Red Breast 12. There you go. Yeah. Cheetah, the Japanese Red Breast 12. Duck rail. So I got and drank my first whiskey the other day as a gift. You're not really doing very much right now. I'm thinking. Don't rush me. Here's a hint. Just pull it off the shelf. My first whiskey the other day as a gift is called the Hague Club. And long oh, dude! Why would you do that to yourself? And long story short, I hated it. Yes. Tasted like perfume, and that normal for your first time drinking is that normal? Hey, club. Okay. So this has been rebranded because David Beckham is behind it now. Is that normal for your first time drinking whiskey, or is that just whiskey uh, is it bad in general? That's so just whiskey. What do you recommend I get instead? I really wanted to like whiskey, so this kind of bummed me out. No, no, you got to try something better than that. Um, I'll tell you, another perfume bottle of whiskey. Who else did this? Collingwood. It's not too strong. It's a single those. grain scotch. It's not too strong. And it's really not that great. See, if you would have told me. It's all light and bright with nothing. If you would have told me this was David Beckham's perfume line, yeah. I would have been like, all right. Yeah. That's, yeah. It's a lot of perfume. David Beckham totally makes a perfume. Yeah, of course he does. Mart Day Jagger or Mart Day Jaeger. Uh, you guys really become one of my favorite YouTube channels at this point since just a few weeks I have really started collecting whiskey myself and your videos have really taught me a lot about whiskey in general. I can thank my father for the initial interest. Yes. If I had money, I would send you guys a bottle of Akintoshan Virgin Oak as well as Glenfiddich Vintage Cask in Highland Park Valkyrie, which has really become one of my all-time favorites since I really want to know what your thoughts are on it. Hee <laughs> hee. Anyway, keep up the good work. A Dutch fan. Thank you, a Dutch fan. I'm gonna end this with a blended whiskey for you. Yeah? Are you ready? Right. This isn't really fun. This is my idea of fun. Try something interesting. Right. This is from Douglas Lang, and I bought all their series. Finally had to order them from England because you can't get most of them here. And this one I actually really dig. It's a Highland blended scotch. Right. Uh, blended malts. So only malt whiskeys. And uh, it's called Timorous Beastie. Sounds like something um, Jack Sparrow would say. No, it's, you obviously are not Scottish. It's from a Robert Burns poem. No, it's where from- Where Timorous Beastie is referenced to a mouse. It's Pirates of the Caribbean. Hmm. But I really dig this one. So that's just a little treat for you for, for Friday. 
It's not fun. <laughs> Whatever fun. Yeah, I kind of meant. I originally meant for it to be fun for everybody, but I'll take. Yeah, but you'll fun take fun for, me. for you. Somebody asked about toasts. It's like, yeah. hey, I sent you a toast, and I never saw the toast. And I replied to him, if I don't get it, and I don't reply to you, I didn't see it. So, so send it again. This is how people. If you guys want to uh, toast the channel, we'll put you on here. This is the official way to do it, and we're going to put it in the description below. Mm -hmm. If you want to do a toast for the channel, then you shoot your toast, you upload it to your YouTube channel, you can mark it as unlisted, mm -hmm. so that it doesn't, it doesn't show up in search results, and the only way people can see it is if you send them a direct link. So Then send us the direct link. Upload it to YouTube, mark it as unlisted if you want to, send us the direct link, and then put that link in the comments with hashtag toast. There you go. And then we will periodically go through, search for hashtag toast. And collect them all. Collect them all. Uh, don't bother we would with love like, to end them with people. Sure, but don't bother. We just got to, you're sending them in too many di different directions. Don't bother with like email or any of that shit. Upload it to your channel. Uh, give us the link in the description below. And then hashtag toast and we'll find it. Rock and roll. Right. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight me, you fight for a friend. If you steal, me, you steal a lover's heart. And if you drink, may, may you drink, drink with us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw in a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.